Assalamu alaikum. The second part of ECMO circuit complication. We will discuss mechanical complication related to the circuit itself and its component in this second lecture. Mechanical complication related to the ECMO. We discussed in the previous lecture complication related to the pump and circuit and heat exchanger. So this lecture we will discuss a complication related to the cannula oxygenator itself and lastly the console failure if it's happened besides mechanical complication also ECMO itself had complication or effect on the patient uh, as effect of the ECMO on kidney effect of the ECMO on uh, brain on cardiovascular all of this complication caused by ECMO the first part in complication is cannula related problems and can be expressed like a low circuit flow. As we mentioned before, centrifugal pump is preload dependent. So that's mean every time, time to time, there will be change in the flow, which can be read on the console. And to monitor the flow, we can use flow meter. So when we face low circuit flow, we should go for post membrane pressure or P3. If we find there is no increase in post membrane pressure, that's mean there is access line in the frequency or a drainage cannula. If we have increased post membrane pressure, that means there is a return line in the frequency. Access insufficiency can be interpreted as inadequate venous return. And we can see that on the console in the form of P1, which is become more negative pressure. It can be due to bleeding, due to lead to hypovolemia. The access cannula may be too low or small in size, high speed, there is cuffing or straining, positioning of the patient, acute vasodilatation, increased intra-abdominal pressure, which will lead to increased venous return, severe aortic regurg, and cardiac tamponade. If we face access insufficiency, how we fix? First, we will go for the assessment for the patient. Assess the volume status of the patient regarding uh, filling pressure, like CVB, uh, trending of the CVB. Assess uh, the tube itself for pre presence of kinking. Assess uh, tube uh, cannula position. If the patient uh, is sitting and why the cannula is femoral, we can make him more flat to allow uh, the drainage to be more easier. Uh, giving volume, uh, 5 ml per kg. Decrease uh, uh, the speed by 10% to allow the filling of uh, right atrium. We, from the start, we should consider the tube size and uh, the cannula size in relation to the flow we need. And we should set low alarm and high alarm, both of them above and below uh, 500 ml per minute below the required flow. This picture is one of our uh, cases. Uh, uh, this is uh, we found there is a decrease in the flow uh, with the same speed, uh, and we can see uh, P VIN or P1 is minus uh, 148. Uh, it shouldn't exceed uh, minus 100, uh, and uh, based on manufacture of Mackay, it shouldn't exceed minus 75 millimeter mercury. Uh, so here we should suspect uh, the if, it's, uh, if, it's, if there is decrease in the trend. We should suspect hypovolemia and kinking of the cannula. Uh, schematic uh, check for this uh, for this troubleshooting. Also, in this case, we can find shuttering or shaking of the tube, uh, uh, which is uh, due to uh, hypovolemia. Uh, in this case, it was uh, uh, due to hypovolemia. When we give volume, this shuttering stopped. Uh, I put zooming for uh, uh, tubes uh, coming from the drainage, uh, drainage line. Here we can find small thrombus and uh, we change the cannula also because there was all the time after checking the circuit we found uh, there is uh, resistance and when we uh, flush the, uh, this cannula, this is venous cannula as we can see here there is multi-stage uh, venous cannula uh, we find that there is this room uh, obstruct the cannula itself when we flush the cannula. 
The another part uh, of low circuit flow is access insufficiency uh, related to uh, arterial cannula or arterial cannula. On that side, there will be increase in afterload or a problem related uh, to uh, pushing of the blood in, to the patient. Uh, any cannula problem, uh, we should check, uh, check for uh, tube, uh, the cannula itself, its the size and uh, its site. Uh, presence of any kinking of, in the tubes. Uh, also, uh, post-membrane pressure should be the sole, uh, the sole for assessment. Uh, assessment of uh, arter MAP, mean arterial blood pressure, especially in VA ECMO. We should consider sedation and paralysis uh, if the patient is moving, coughing, and uh, th that consider in case of vasodilatation. If the patient is uh, normal volumic and uh, satisfactory uh, CVB, we can consider increasing uh, the speed if it's tolerated and uh, observe the patient. One of the major uh, complications shouldn't happen at all is accidental decannulation. There should be complete supervision for uh, the cannulas and the good securing uh, its site. Uh, but if, if it's happened, so it's emergency states, first we should co compress the site of bleeding, maximize uh, the uh, ventilation and hemodynamics, uh, calling for blood and calling for backup uh, surgeon to insert another ECMO, change another cannula, and uh, change, uh, uh, change the circuit. Retrograde flow is another complication. As we mentioned before, a uh, centrifugal pump is non-occlusive pump. So when we face a condition of uh, decreased the speed, so the blood instead of uh, aspirated from the drainage cannula or venous side, it will come or aspirated from the return cannula or arterial side. So what the cause of retrograde flow? Low RPM or low speed or significant increase in blood pressure. So there will be high afterload or resistance to uh, blood pushing by the, uh, the ECMO machine. So there will be uh, acute clinical deterioration. When we face this problem, what we should do? What should we do? First, we should clamping the tube post pump head, uh, and we should note that arterial uh, first, which is red, and then the venous, which is blue. And we to remember red before blue. After that, we should adjust the flow probe correctly placed on the tube. Increase uh, RPM by 10%. Then, after adjusting the, everything, we can slowly release the clamps and observe for the sign of forward flow. Once the support has been achieved, we can decrease the speed to achieve the desired flow. This picture uh, is made uh, just to show uh, the back flow prevention. Uh, it was made uh, by uh, by our perfusionist on simulation uh, to, uh, to 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 show how the pack flow prevention alarm will appear on the console. The second most important part in the ECMO circuit is the oxygenator. It's considered as the lung of the circuit. So if we have uh, oxygenator cloth inside the membrane itself or in the inlet or in the outlet, so we will face problem of decreased oxygen and CO2 transfer. This is why, because increased resistance to the flow or CO2 and oxygen transfer will be decreased. But if we have water uh, condensed inside the oxygenator due to uh, humidification of, uh, or change in the temperature and humidify of the blood inside the oxygenator, so that water will lead to CO2 retention. And this is, can be explained by the fluid is saturated with oxygen from the ventilated gas, so the blood uh, perfusing that section of the oxygenator will be still oxygenated. And CO2 will decrease, uh, removal will decrease as CO2 accumulated in uh, gas phase of the fluid. In this video, we can see water coming out from the oxygenator. It is called uh, oxygenator sneezing or coughing. At that time, uh, we increase uh, the, the sweep gas to 10 liters per minute to wash out uh, the water from the oxygenator. 
this case, uh, in this case, we have CO2 retention. So we increase the sweep gas to wash out water from the oxygenator. How can we suspect there is oxygenator failure? There is there is deterioration in blood gas. Color change of post oxygenator blood. We can see here there is two different. This is the venous blood is dark red and the arterial blood is bright red. But here the arterial and venous blood are both the same color. Increase moisture at the membrane. Decrease in post membrane pressure B3 and increase the gradient despite no increase in the PRM. Increase the pre oxygenator pressure B2. There is consumptive coagulopathy can be represented as decrease the platelet count and decrease fibrinogen, increase the free hemoglobin, increase D dimer and LDH. We face problem regarding hypoxemia and uh, in CO2 retention in some patients. So how should we go? First, we should check gas line. Should be secure. The gas entering into the oxygenator should be secure. Then check gas flow meter, uh, which is uh, the connection between the gas flow meter and the source of the air, of the air or oxygen from the wall. Check the membrane gases pre and post oxygenator. Uh, and if you need to uh, confirm the oxygenator function, increase FiO2 from the ECMO side to 100%, then take pre and post uh, oxygenator uh, sampling to see the relation between both of them. If there is no improvement and after doing uh, 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 oxygenator cuffing, increase the FiO2, we should contact uh, the perfusionist to come to observe also the membrane uh, checking the oxygenator and its connection if there is clot or not. Uh, complete clotting of the oxygenator is very emergency condition uh, and the, uh, the circuit should be changed. In this case we have the difference in color we go for a check the membrane of the oxygenator by flashlight we found thrombus inside the oxygenator itself and in another case uh, we find a uh, clot or thrombus out in the outlet uh, in the outlet of the oxygenator both of these cases from my uh, from my work this picture of the console uh, where the there is a thrombus inside the, the oxygenator we can see there is a increase in delta pressure uh, inside uh, the console and the alarm said the pressure drop above the limit it should in this delta pressure shouldn't exceed 40 millimeter mercury so at that time, uh, we should go uh, to check other parts of the oxygenator. Case of our, uh, in, our in my unit, uh, here we will find that there is increase in the delta pressure, is very high, uh, increase in pressure uh, uh, P2 uh, pre oxygenator pressure, decrease in post oxygenator pressure. So we will go for systematic approach to check the oxygenator failure. Part of the ventilator uh, efficacy uh, checking is a pre-oxygenator sample and post-oxygenator sample. In this case, we take pre-oxygenator sample. We find that uh, SpO2 is 73%, and we go for uh, post-oxygenator, uh, and at that time we increase. Uh, if I have two from ECMO side to 100%, 52, uh, 50, 552, uh, uh, and the saturation is 100%, that means that oxygenator is functioning well. If we also look to other parameters related to the patient, uh, uh, we find that the patient is hemodynamically stable. In this case, he is VA ECMO. Uh, he is in VA ECMO. Uh, we find there is no increase in lactate uh, from patient side or even uh, we can detect any increase in lactate in pre and post oxygenator samples. The patient is uh, on a hemodynamically stable, no increasing uh, in inotropes, and uh, that means there is, there is no problem re related to the oxygenator. This is the picture of the oxygenator uh, examined by uh, the flashlight. We can see any clots, anything. So at that time, we go for there is a problem in the console and the console need to be changed or re recalibration 
uh, and it was very interesting troubleshooting. Uh, we changed the circuit in that uh, in, in that in that case, and we re uh, priming new circuit and uh, recalibrate the console, and then it's working very well. All the time, our patient was uh, was the normal oxygenation, uh, normal EBG, and was normal hemodynamics. These references uh, are also I depend on ECMO also red book. And the pictures and videos uh, in this lecture is from my work. Thanks for uh, watching and you can post your comment and your questions in the comments.